Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. In this video, we're going to start taking a little detour. So we've been working on having uh, various versions of our task list, and we had just finished version 3 of our task list. Uh, in versions 2 and 3 of the task list, we used AJAX for communication. So whereas version 1 did full page loads of HTML pages, Version 2 and 3 used AJAX calls instead. AJAX calls are fine as long as the client is pulling things from the server. But what about when the server actually needs to send something to the client? To address this type of situation, uh, they have created a standard called WebSockets. And WebSockets effectively allow two-way communication between client and server. To help demonstrate how you can use WebSockets inside of the Play framework, I'm going to work on just kind of a completely separate little application just for doing web chats. So here's our task list three. Uh, this was the controller for it. We're going to create a completely new controller. How about we call it the chat controller or web, web socket chat. That's a good name for it. Okay, so web socket chat turns out, since it's a controller, we're going to need a lot of these same things that we had before. Uh, we'll change this to be WebSocket Chat. Now the way that WebSockets are done in, I actually don't need models, the way WebSockets are done in Play, so Play sits on top of the Akka library, and in fact it uses Akka HTTP for its underlying web server. Therefore it is somewhat appropriate that the to handle WebSocket communication, which is kind of fundamentally happening in an asynchronous parallel type of way, they use Akka actors. Okay, and so what we're going to do in here is we are going to set up uh, the foundation for working with our awk actors. If you've never worked with awk actors before, uh, obviously it's something that you might want to, to learn, but I think we'll be able to describe enough of it. To start off with, let's just go ahead and start where we would make a lot of things. And we are going to make an action as an implicit request and have it send back a view. So we haven't written this view yet, an HTML view for, I don't know, the chat page. Okay. So we go inside of our view and we make a new file. Let's call it chatpage.scala.html. And we didn't pass any arguments into this to start with. Now, it might be needed if our main, and I believe our main does, our main requires, uh, looks like it takes the implicit flash, so we probably want this to have an implicit request header. Okay, that way we can call main and that should be passed through. Note that if we looked at any of our other primary views, say uh, the version 3 main, we had this similar type of thing, though this also passed through a flash. Eh, we'll find out whether or not we have to add that when we go to compile. Okay, so web socket chat. So what should the contents of this page look like? Uh, they don't really have to be anything all that interesting to start with. We can just add, for example, a text field and a text area with the idea that the user would type into the text field. So it's an input of type text. Um, and we need to give it an ID because we're going to have to interact with this programmatically. So chat input, for example. Um, and if we don't give it a size, 
it will collapse to be fairly small. Interesting. Okay. So we have that, and then we can put a nice little line break, and then we want a text area. A text area, it also needs an ID so that we can interact with it. Um, and similarly, it needs a number of rows and columns. A decent number of rows, so it appears fairly large. We'll see what 40 looks like. And the columns, I want that to match the size of my text input. And there we go, we get a text area. Okay, let's add a route to pull this in. So let's go ahead and put a little comment. Routes for web socket chat app. Sure. And we're going to put in a git. We'll just call it chat. How's that? And controllers dot websocket chat dot index. Okay, we're not passing any arguments through. That looks like a good place to start. Before we type anything more, let's see how close we are to getting that to run. Okay, doesn't, doesn't find the flash. We expected that was a possibility. So let's go and grab from here, the flash argument from the implicit list and add it to there. Okay, so the idea is I should be able to type a message there and when I hit enter on it, it should send it to the chat. You know, that's actually way too big for what I have on my screen. So I'm gonna reduce the number of rows dramatically, maybe down to 15 or even 10. Um, and that should be sent and we should see the output of what everyone types. Okay. Um, but we got a page and that was still a little bit bigger than our view, but if I make the console smaller. Okay. That seems reasonable as a place to start. So now what do we need to do? Well, uh, I was just talking about the interactions that this should have. It should have the ability for us to, when we type and hit enter on the text, it should send that text to the WebSocket. Um, turns out that when we open the page, we should also connect to a WebSocket uh, because in order to send the message to the WebSocket, we have to have a WebSocket. All of this is going to go inside of JavaScript. So let's go on down to our public and inside of JavaScript, let's go ahead and make a chat.js. Okay, so this is code for the WebSocket chat application. Okay, and what do we want to do inside of here? Um, well, I guess we could, because we're gonna be using them a fair bit, we could go grab the text field. So the input field is document dot get element by ID of, we called this chat input. Okay, and we could similarly make a a variable that keeps track of the output. Okay. Um, and at this point, we would need to open a WebSocket. So how do we do that? Actually, given where we are on this video, I think it's about time to stop this one. We'll come back in the next video and we will open a WebSocket and 
we're going to have to do some work to make sure that that is working and doing the communication that we want. So we'll come back and we'll play with that next time.